Hi there, I'm Brittany Miller, a junior docent at the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science. Today I will be talking about the zodiac constellations that you can find in the beautiful night sky. I will be going over the wonderful legends associated with these glorious star patterns and some other interesting information that have to do with each constellation. So sit tight, get comfy, and let's get groovy with the constellations. The first one is Aries. The name Aries means the ram in Latin. Aries is the 39th largest constellation in the sky. Aries in Greek mythology is represented by the golden ram who took an important man, Phrixus, and his sister, who were on the brink of death, to a neighboring place. The sister unfortunately died, but the brother safely arrived at the place and got married. Taurus is a large constellation and one of the oldest ones known. Taurus means bull in Latin. Taurus is the 17th largest constellation in the sky. It is usually always associated with a bull, with the Greeks, Egyptians, and the Babylonians. The constellation is most popular for Pleiades, or rather the Seven Sisters, and the Hyades, which are the two closest open star clusters to our planet. Gemini is the inseparable constellation. It's seen as two twins holding hands, Castor and Polydeuces. Gemini is the 30th largest constellation in the night sky. One of the stars, Castor, is the 44th brightest star in the sky. It is 51 light years from the sun. And another star, Pollux, is the brightest star in the constellation and the 17th brightest star in the sky. These two stars represent the heads of the twins. Polydeuces saw his brother Castor die before him and asked his father Zeus to put him in the sky to share immortality with his brother. Cancer means the crab in Latin, it is the faintest constellation in the zodiac and is the 31st, 31st largest in the sky. The mythology is rather different than our other zodiac constellations. The crab constellation represents a crustacean sent to get rid of Hercules, an old Greek warrior, but Hercules ended up kicking the crab all the way into the stars. Leo is next on the list. Leo represents the lion and is usually linked to the Nemean lion in Greek mythology. It is the 12th largest constellation in the sky. It is also one of the oldest, dating back to being similar to a constellation found by the Mesopotamians in 3000 BC. The Nemean lion is said to be the king of beasts, which is why it was placed in the sky. Now we have Virgo. Virgo is the second largest constellation in the night sky. It also contains Spica, one of the brightest stars in the sky. The constellation is typically associated with the Greek goddess of justice. She is shown to have angel wings with wheat in her hand, which is marked by Spica. Libra is next. The constellation means the weighing scales, which is held by the Greek goddess of justice, who is represented by Virgo, is the only zodiac constellation that is an object rather than a mythological being or animal. It is associated with balance by the Romans and Babylonians. Scorpius, also called Scorpio, looks similar to a scorpion, it is one of the brightest constellations in the night sky. The myth involves a great Greek hunter named Orion, which is also another constellation in the sky. It is said that Orion is fleeing from the mighty scorpion, which killed him long ago. Sagittarius is up next, is the 15th largest constellation in the sky. The constellation represents a centaur, a creature that is half man, half horse, who is shooting an arrow at the Scorpio constellation. Many of the zodiac constellations have meteor showers associated with them, but Sagittarius does not. Capricornus, which is said to be the goatfish, is the second and faintest constellation in the zodiac next to Cancer. Capricornus is associated with Pan, a forest deity by the Greeks. He was placed in the sky by Zeus for doing many great deeds for the other gods. Aquarius means the water bearer in Latin, which makes sense for what it signifies. It is said to be a man pouring water from an amphora into the mouth of the southern fish, which is the constellation Pisces Austrinus. Aquarius is the 10th largest constellation in the sky. Pisces is Latin for the fish. Pisces is from Babylonian origin, who saw it as two fish joined together by cord. 
The constellation is usually associated with a Roman myth that had to do with Venus and Cupid, who tied themselves together and turned themselves into fish to get away from Typhon. Wow, so much awesome information about some of the constellations in our very own night sky. If you have a particular constellation you want to learn more about, do research it and have fun learning some more. I have one assignment for you all. I would love it if you went outside and checked out the night sky. See if you could spot each of these constellations or even some others that I didn't mention, like Orion or the Big Dipper. Here's a graph to let you know when and where you can see them. And here's an awesome website where you can see every inch of the sky at different times throughout the year. You can even print it out. Have fun and thank you for checking out this virtual visit.